Tmux has always been a tool that I myself never thought I needed in my workflow. And very recently, I decided to give it a go due to my current work experience, as well as my current development setup really seemed like it might be a good fit for me and has completely changed my workflow. In fact, my day to day setup has actually started to revolve a lot more around Tmux, as well as my development environment is very much heavily based on using Tmux in pretty much every component. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to show what I've learned the goods, the bads, the uglies of Tmux, and what I think some of you guys can take away from this and apply to your own workflows. Anyways guys, let's get into the video. So what is Tmux? Tmux describes itself as a terminal multiplexer that enables multiple terminals to be viewed in a single screen, and it also allows itself to be detached from and continued at a later date while it runs in the background. These are kind of its major features, and we'll talk a bit more about where its strong points are and where I think it really stands out as we go along. The big thing that people really point out about it, and it mentions even in its own man page as I mentioned before, is the fact that it allows you to handle multiple terminals within one terminal. Basically, it allows you to avoid opening a bunch of different terminals. Now, the other great feature of it is its ability to manage sessions as well as different windows. Um, sessions are really the big one because it allows you to basically have a bunch of different setups running that can all be connected to and detached from. So that way you don't have to lose a certain setup or anything like that. Now, you're probably wondering what made me actually give Tmux a try. The big thing that drew me to giving Tmux a try was falling in love with Emacs's client server architecture, where you can basically start up Emacs as a server, and then you can actually launch a client and it will start up in Emacs immediately. And it allows you to transfer and get access to a lot of data that is going on in the other windows. Now this video isn't meant to be out of Emacs, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about. So right here, I have an instance of Emacs and I can run the command Emacs client dash C. And this will create a new window of Emacs that is running as a client to the server that is running in this instance. So now if I do, let's see, let's do these switch buffers you'll see that I can actually switch to this buffer right here. If I switch to this and I start typing hello, it will instantly update in the other buffers. Now, as a result, this means that I basically get access to everything that's going on in another window. This means that say, for example, if I'm working on a multi-monitor setup, I can actually have a whole separate window that is dedicated to maybe that other screen. Now, another great thing that comes as a result of having these features is that you can actually access a single Emacs session from the command line very, for example, here, do like LS. Maybe I wanted to capture something like this. I could do LS and then I could even pipe that through into a client or something that I actually have is I have a really simple script called emenu. So if I just do ls and pipe that into emenu, it will actually allow me to pick through my options in Emacs. So let's see if I just did F and L. Um, that's a pretty good example of where it just gives you a bunch of options that you can actually access from within Emacs. And it allows you to really integrate your workflow without having to basically feel like you're starting from scratch every time. For example, if I opened up NeoVim and then I opened up another client of NeoVim and say I opened up this file, then I end up not being able to access if I do like a little LS, I can't actually switch to that buffer. And so as a result, there's not really an easy way to jump back and forth between them. And it kind of limits your workflow. A really good example of this is say, if you like using FCF at the command line, but maybe you use telescope with inside your editor and you want to jump back and forth between different buffers, that's not really an option anymore unless you have all of those things just running in one terminal session. And so this is kind of what made me consider giving Tmux a try. Honestly, a feature like this is something that I feel like deserves its own video. And maybe I'll talk a bit more about if you guys are interested in it, but I know a lot of my community is either not really into Emacs at all, or super into it, so I won't dwell too long on this topic. Now, the major draw that actually made me think that this would be possible with Tmux was its session functionality. I think the best way to describe it is just to give you a quick working demo and give you guys kind of an idea of how it works. Let's go ahead and start off with something really simple. So we're gonna run the command Tmux. So obviously you have to have Tmux installed, and then you just do new dash session. So now when I do that, I will get a new Tmux session. Usually you'll have a bar down below. So let's go ahead and make that available for you guys to see. There is this little bar down here, which will tell us a bit more information about our current session. So the ideas are pretty straightforward. When you look at it, you can treat it just like a normal terminal, do an LS, um, CD. So you kind of get the idea. It acts just like a normal terminal would. Now, the idea of how Tmux actually works is it has 
a prefix key, kind of like Vim has a leader key. And the idea is that you would use that prefix key and that gives you access to all of the keys that you'd use in Tmux. By default, it would be control B, but I have changed that to control T just because I find that I use control B pretty often. So now if I just do control T and then quote, it will open up a split. Now I can do control T O to jump back and forth. So control T O as in other pane. Now, if I just do control T X, yes, it will remove that pane. So pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of documentation on it. A lot of people opt to remap these keys. I personally don't really mind them that much. There's not too many that you really have to memorize. A really good hack for you guys that are having trouble remembering them. So you can do control T or whatever your prefix key is and then question mark, and that will give you a nice list. Now by default, uh, you guys won't have access to Vim keys. In fact, if I actually just go ahead and there we go. So I've removed my configuration file. So now I'm just going to go ahead and end the session and we'll start a new one. So now this is actually the base setup that you'll have with Tmux. So now my prefix is control B. Now if I do question mark, I'll get access to all this stuff. Now if I hit the Vim keys that you'd probably be expecting, they don't actually do anything because by default it uses sort of read line keys. Um, they're actually more like Emacs keys, but the idea is pretty much the same. If you guys are used to using read line or Emacs key bindings, then the default key bindings will be pretty familiar. We'll talk a bit more about customization later on in the video. The main reason that I wanted to talk about this is it's session management. And right now we only have one session. We can check our sessions by doing prefix S and this will list all of our sessions. So as you can see, we only have one. Now we can create another session by doing our prefix key D and that will detach. Now we can run new session again. And then if we just do control B or our prefix key S, we will see that there are now two different sessions. So we can switch to our old one, just do an LS. So you guys know what I'm talking about. You can see the difference. So now if I do our prefix key sessions again, we can switch back to the other one and let's just do H top B S. And now you can see that it gives us a nice little preview of the different sessions. So that's kind of the general idea of sessions. Now sessions give you the opportunity to basically separate everything out and you can kind of have things running maybe completely separated from each other. There's a lot of possibilities when it comes to a session, but that's kind of the general concepts is you have panes, you have uh, windows, which are actually different from sessions and panes. The idea of a window is if I did, so if I just do an H top here, then I did our prefix key C, then it will create a new window and I can do LS. And now I can actually do prefix key N, prefix key N, and it'll allow us to jump back and forth between these different windows, but they're all under the same session. Pretty understandable. If you look and I jump between the sessions, you'll see that it actually lists these different windows in the sessions. So this is uh, not super important right off the bat, and you'll kind of see the functionality behind it as we go through the video. In fact, if anything, you can actually create a split as we mentioned before, and then I run H top in here. I can actually go ahead and separate that off just by doing prefix key exclamation point. And then now we have, and we can jump back and forth. So as you can see, it actually split that pane off into its own window. If this is confusing you, don't worry. This is um, already pretty advanced stuff to go over. A lot of people probably don't use that feature too much. So I'm, like I said before, fairly new to Tmux. So if there's any of these terms that I'm using uh, improperly, let me know in the comments and I'll pin any corrections that I may have messed up in this video. Now, while we can create sessions, we can also detach. So if we do the detaching again, so we've detached. Now we can do Tmux LS, and this will list all of our sessions. And we can do Tmux A to attach, and it will reattach to a session. So this is kind of where the power comes in. So say, for example, I'm doing all this stuff and I kill this uh, terminal. And then if I just open a terminal, I can just do Tmux A, boom, back into it. So if, for example, my terminal crashed or I wanted to just get it out of the way, then this would be pretty useful as well as maybe I have another terminal. So let's go ahead and open another terminal. We could do Tmux A and it will attach to the other session. But if I do prefix S, I can actually open the same session in two different terminals and it will be able to see the same sort of stuff. As you guys remember, probably from when we were talking before about Emacs, you're probably kind of seeing some crossover here. Now, if I go ahead and uh, switch over to the next window, it will also change it in the other terminal. So there are some differences and uh, that's kind of something to keep in mind is that they are in a sense, the same sort of the session is being treated the same between the two different terminals. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, 
just play around with it and i'm sure you guys will be able to wrap around your head now another feature that i think is worth mentioning is its ability to dispatch commands asynchronously and keep us being able to interact with these different things right now i'm in a tmux session if i do tmux new w just means new window and i do sleep 10 so that's means sleep for 10 seconds and i hit enter then it will open a new window, but I can still go ahead and switch back and forth and get the same functionality. There you go. And you'll see that the actual window down here that we had down there before uh, is actually gone. The big reason that it goes away is once the command is done, then we can go ahead and end it. So once again, it starts its own little window right here, but it will go away once it is uh, done. Now, each of these windows is technically acting as its own terminal. So since we were able to do that, you can kind of see the idea. Now, if I did the same thing, but I did split window and hit enter, it will actually run that in a split. So now we can actually see the output. Now, obviously this is not completely useful, but we still get access and we can still actively use this other terminal while that command is running. And as you can see, it ended and it went away. So there's a lot of functionality that I'm sure you guys can imagine being useful in this case, because you can kind of automate this ability to call these commands from other tools. Most of the time, the benefit of just using it for splitting and window management is pretty minor. Um, it does have some cool like things like uh, maybe for example, if I wanted to create a split, let's create another one. So now that I've got all these windows open, I can actually mess around with them. So if I do prefix space, it will actually jump between a bunch of different layouts. So if I do prefix space, it will give us like a vertical, it'll give us some horizontal um, prefix space, and it will give us this nice tiled one. Um, there's a bunch of different ones that you guys can kind of play around with. I just personally don't know if the actual functionality is that useful in all use cases. And in a lot of cases, if you're using something like NeoVim, you might be better off using buffers as long as you can because buffers offer a lot more functionality within NeoVim. The best integration you can get with Tmux is still not going to beat the native integration with the exact same program. Now, the big example use case of where I feel like this kind of stands out is the ability to have, like I said before, multiple monitors still able to access the same Vim session. So a pretty common way to actually handle such a thing is say we've got this session going, so I can do Tmux new dash session dash t um, and then we're going to just take session one and then we want to do and then we want to call this session um we'll just call this left there we go so now we do get another session now the big thing you'll see here is that we're actually have the same windows now if i took this guy and i did prefix so now if i do ls it's going to show up on the other one but now i can actually access basically the same terminals in a completely separate one. So now if I do prefix n, I can still, let's just say I'd open up nvim with this file. Now I've got all of this stuff open and maybe I want to poke in and do a little quick check. Maybe I've got some reference material over here um, and then say, okay, well now I want to open up this reference material on my other monitor. Just pretend this is another monitor in this case. And then I can do prefix n and I can just go ahead and look at it right away. Now, the cool thing is that I can still access other sessions. So I can do control B S and I can just go ahead and access our other session that we have going on. Now I can do control prefix S and we can switch back. Now, the big thing to keep in mind, if you did prefix S and you wanted to switch back, then you'd actually be switching back to, as you can see here, we're at session one instead of our intended session would be left is what we want to actually be on. So actually we can do uh, the best way I know of, I'm sure there's probably a better way, but I haven't actually figured it out yet, is to just do prefix V and detach, and then just attach back to left. And now if we're batched back to left, we'll see that we are once again um, separated from the other session. Now you'll see that when I actually have one focused, it does change the shape of the terminal when I have the session. As soon as I just go prefix N, let me go back over here. Let's say I change the window size, you'll see that it corrects itself. Now, another thing that I think really deserves a bit of commenting on, and I think you guys will get a lot of functionality out of, is automation with Tmux. You see, Tmux's biggest strength in my mind is its ability to basically connect a bunch of terminal sessions. And the biggest reason that this is important to me is because currently in my work situation, I work with microservices. Yeah, that's right. I deal with the microservices hell. The big thing is that if you work with microservices, often if you're debugging them, uh, you're building them yourself and everything like that, then you end up starting up processes individually. Um, in theory, you wouldn't be doing that and you'd have Kubernetes manage it, but sometimes you do just have to start things up on your own. And Tmux handles this really well for automation. 
So I kind of want to just give you guys a really quick example. So let's just go ahead. A little script that I just whipped up. Uh, basically, we have a variable called session, which will be used to basically tell Tmux um, what session we're referring to. And so we'll tell Tmux to start a new session called session. And the dash D here basically means run it as a daemon. So it's not going to start immediately in this terminal, but we can still attach to it later. Now, right here, I'm basically setting some things that will allow us to actually be able to keep up to date with what's going on in our different windows. Um, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we go. But this is just putting some extra configuration just to give us a nice little bit of visual feedback on what's going on. Now here I say sleep three seconds. Now if you were actually writing your script um, to basically set up your dev environment or something like that, where you had to start up all these services, often they have prerequisites. So here is where I'm basically saying, okay, sleep three seconds would be like setting up the microservices, starting them all up, wait till everything's up and running, um, set up the database, wait till that's done. And then once all that's done, I want you to set up a new window. So right here I'm saying new window. Uh, the terminal will be session, so the session that we had before, and then the second window. And then this is just running a really simple thing where it will just uh, echo the word, the word done every 10 seconds. And then in a split in that same uh, window, it will actually ping the IP address 1.1.1. .1 .1. Yeah, you get the idea. So these will both be running in their own window. Now this is going to make a lot more sense when you guys are actually thinking about it and I'll kind of go over this in just a second. So let's go ahead and run this. So if I hit enter, um, it's gonna be annoyed about the comments, but anyways, it's waiting three seconds. It's starting everything up. Now, what I can do is I can do tmux a, and that will attach right to it. Now, right now I can see everything that's going on. And right down here, you'll see that I have that original ZSH session that I had running because as I said before, this started all this stuff up in a new window. So I can actually go ahead and jump over there. Maybe I wanted to do some debugging and maybe run some other stuff in the background. Maybe I wanted to try like changing the ports, all that sort of stuff. Then I actually have a standalone terminal that I can access. Now I could do um, prefix n, jump over to it. And oh, did you see that down there? It says activity happened in the other window. So if I do prefix n, prefix n, and we get it again, you'll see activity in window two. We can even start these things in their own window. And I run it again, restart everything. Then I can go ahead and do tmux a, and we've attached again, and these things are all running. Now, maybe for example, I wanted to actually separate these. I wanna keep track of the pinging and the duns on their own. Now, this is where that little command that I was saying before, where you can do prefix exclamation point, and then bam, they're separated off to their own window. And now I can see, oh, activities happening in these different windows. And then I can go ahead and jump between them. Kind of a game changer in my mind because there is a limit to re screen real estate. And if you have something that maybe prints like a backtrace all on one line, there's no way you're gonna read that in your terminal. So being able to access it like this is super useful. And just because I know somebody's gonna go crazy if I don't mention it, uh, it also comes with this really awesome functionality called copy mode. So say for example, if you're using ST, which is a popular terminal that actually doesn't come with back scrolling and you can't scroll back up, then this might be pretty useful. So all you do is you do your prefix and then left square bracket, and then you can move around. So right now I'm using VI keys. By default, it won't actually have these, but the kind of idea is basically being able to say, I take this and I want to copy it. I can go ahead and just do space and then enter and then I've copied it. So now if I go prefix right square bracket and it will paste what I copied. Um, pretty straightforward, not really anything too outrageous, but it is super helpful. Maybe if you have like splits and stuff like that in Tmux, it is really nice to be able to copy stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and just make a nice little vertical split, LS, and maybe I wanted to copy like these two lines. Well, if I do that with the mouse, it will copy like that. Versus if I do it with this, I can go ahead and just copy it just like this. Yeah, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy, but I'm sure you guys could see quite a few bits of benefits to using that, but I feel like enough people have shown that off that I'm sure you get the idea. Anyways, guys, I hope this really gave you guys a bit of insight into Tmux. Something that I kind of wanted to talk a bit about is the opinions on whether Tmux is the best option for everything. Some people really seem to consider um, using Vim or NeoVim's built-in splits um, useless. And I think a lot of those people just are losing out on a lot of functionality. And while I do think that they are right in some ways where it can be very powerful to have uh, splits from Tmux instead of splits from Vim, you do lose out on the possibility of having proper completion because uh, you're basically limiting it to what Tmux can see. And Vim does not show Tmux all of the information in the buffer. So you're kind of losing out there. 
Um, I do think that there are pros and there are cons, but I think if you're using Vim and you need to access a buffer or something like that, then you should probably use Vim or NeoVim's uh, built-in functionality. And then other than that, I think there is a lot of functionality to using Tmux. I think running Vim inside of Tmux is also really helpful. And that's part of the reason that I actually have the bar turned off is because sometimes I just like to have Tmux running and then open Vim in there. And then maybe for example, if I close my terminal by accident, I can still access that session that I had running instead of having to go to a backup um, that NeoVim created. So just kind of something to keep in mind. And that's just my opinion. I think a lot of the functionality of using sessions is really where it stands out and where its power is. It is still pretty okay at window management. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to give a big thank you to my GitHub sponsors, Brian Jenks and DFDX. Thanks you guys for supporting me. If anybody else wants to support me on GitHub sponsors, you'll find the link to my GitHub down below. If any of you guys want to chat with me, I recently set up a matrix spaces where you guys can all talk with me, chat with each other. And if you guys use Tmux, I'd love to know how you use Tmux. Where do you use Tmux? Um, do you not really see any benefit anymore? Where do you guys draw the line? Where do you use Tmux? Where do you not use Tmux? I'd love to hear your guys' opinion. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you next time.